Welcome to Historic Hole. My name is David, and as always, I am joined by Jason and Michael. Greetings, brothers and sisters in the universal consciousness. Oh, God. Uh, and also, hello. That's Jason. I'm Michael. And uh, we here at Historic Hole, we take a funny look at history, and sometimes we roll with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Running with the dogs. Oh, God. Turn it off. <laughs> So today, sometimes we talk about people, sometimes we don't, sometimes we talk about things, but I think today it's like... A, a lot of things, places, and people. But uh, the topic is lysergic acid diethylamide. Got it through. It is LSD. <laughs> he will not say it again. Never again. Uh, some of that California sunshine. Um, also, last episode at the end of uh, Albert Einstein, I forgot to give the... Go listen. The page total... On the FBI uh, file yeah, on did. Albert Einstein. Uh, so it was a trick to get you to listen to this episode. Uh, the, I don't think anyone forgot either. <laughs> <laughs> the total was 1,427 pages in his file up That's until he died. pages. Yes, because of his socialist. The commie is what he was. <clears throat> Anywho, acid. Uh, You've heard of it. You might have done it too. Um, <laughs> no one here has. Hmm. We've so re we've read about it extensively. Absolutely, it was the first since it was first synthesized uh, November sixteenth, nineteen thirty eight, by Albert Hoffman, a whoops man of Swiss birth. Fucking Swiss, useless. It's like a ho ho. <laughs> he was working at uh, Sandoz Laboratories in the phar pharmaceutical chemical department. Uh, and he was studying medicinal plants and the ergot fungus to sort of work on medicine. And in case anyone who's listened to historical forgot what ergot is, that's what everyone ate on the Salem witch trials. At least that's our theory, historical. <laughs> was that disproven? Yes. Yeah. Was this Shut proven? up. You it's actually, our historical. You actually brought that up in a history class. I was trying to get people to look. In college. They were bespelled. Years ago. Now, uh... Lysergic acid is a byproduct of the lysis uh, phenomenon. It makes your head itch. Uh, which is the breakdown of a cell membrane in the ergot alkaloids. So there are many different kinds of lysergic acid. And it oh. was in November. Flavors, when, if you will. Yeah, 1938. He found this this flavor. And never take the brown acid. <laughs> So was it now are the different flavors like is this one is this the is this flavor Gatorade flavors that, like or is this like the thing that makes you hallucinate or yeah. is it are, are are do all of them do it they just do it in different ways or or is this the one that only one that did actually did that I think it was probably the only one that actually oh, okay. did that because of what he was trying to do he's working on analytics which are a uh, central nervous system stimulant hmm. to treat uh, depression. ADHD and respiratory depression. It's what That's, Captain America took. That sounds like fun. Mm. Right. Um, but he shelved it because he started working on other things. So he just put it away. And then... Shelf. In like a vial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or something. Yeah. Like vial mark like, labeled. In a fridge somewhere. I'm exactly. One of those things just goes... Psh! When you open it, it's like, I'll use this later. <laughs> what, was there a number involved? Was it like LSD-25? Is that what it was? Or? No, it was just the diethylamide. Oh, okay. Yeah. There were the lysergic acids. <laughs> this was the diethylamide one. David was there. <laughs> He's like, wasn't it this one? <laughs> I stole the rest. <laughs> Hasn't been working. Uh, but uh, came back around uh, to it in 1943. April 16th, while he was working on it again, a little drop got on him. It's not a good year, by the way. There was a there was a war that had broken out across the world. However, he was Swiss. He was backpedaling his uh, acid research because on of his war. bike. It's always well, backpedaling. He was, <laughs> he, and he was Swiss. Oh, well, yeah. And they were neutral. Yeah, that's true. And delicious. So there's nothing really happening. Like the world is on fire around Switzerland, and he's just. Doing drugs and riding his bike. Standing in the mountains. He's, the crea women. he's creating drugs and, and riding on his bike. Creating, doing, and you know, riding. Um, so <laughs> after... The, we live in Switzerland. Or Swiss. They, it's Sweden. not German. Sweden. So after the <laughs> initial... Sweden is a different country. Can't do. 
I'm talking about the you know the ladies with the the hair. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the buns? Are they buns? I don't know. I don't do women's hair. I do men's hair if anyone wants. <laughs> Isn't it German again? They're kind of German. They're close. Enough. Bavarian. That sounds Bavarian. Like the pretzels. Yeah, they're wearing later hosen. That seems. Like yeah, seems right. the women you see at Oktoberfest with just spinning running around. around with beers. <laughs> yeah, it was like giant thirty-two ounce like mugs in their hands. So after the initial contact with that little droplet, uh, he had <laughs> first contact. <laughs> remarkable restlessness combined with a slight dizziness, hmm. and this is in his words. At home, I laid down and sank into a not unpleasant, intoxicated-like condition characterized by an extremely extremely stimulated imagination and in a dreamlike state with eyes closed i perceived an uninterrupted stream of fantastic pictures extraordinary shapes with intense kaleidoscopic play of colors and after about two hours uh it faded away and that was just that little bit so he started but, think- wouldn't that just a little bit like the acid is like measured in micrograms yeah so that little bit, wouldn't that be quite a bit? I mean, if it, it was only just a for... drop, like that's a micrograms. I mean, I, mean, I probably... suppose it wasn't synthesized as well. As Pure. It... Yeah. <laughs> it was an Michael, accidental Michael over droplet, here with the recipe you know? just telling us like. Oh. Right. If anybody needs some. <laughs> and with the time frame. <laughs> Email us at historical <laughs> at gmail.com. Oh, believe me, the tools were not <laughs> as good back then. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, three days later, he decided to do a more uh, intense Experiment. Experiment with it. Uh, he took 250 micrograms. That's always what I say when I have a bad day or something. Do something stupid. It was like, I was experimenting. <laughs> Wait, h- how many micrograms? 250. That's a lot. Uh, mm. That's a good amount. Yeah. Someone call it the holy dose. <laughs> uh, and this was on April 19th. Uh, 1943. So close to making it cool. <laughs> 420. Uh, so took 250 micrograms and after about an hour, he started, he didn't feel well. (laughs) Yeah, probably not. So he asked his, uh, lab assistant to escort him home. And as was tradition in Switzerland, uh, they rode around on bikes everywhere. Yeah. Can you ride behind me as I like (laughs) drive my Uh, bike ride? Uh, well, it was during the bike ride, um. That his world collapsed. <laughs> uh, he started having uh, existential th- crises. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Feelings of anxiety. Uh, and then when he got home, he had alternating beliefs that uh, his neighbor was a witch <laughs> that was trying to kill him. So it's just like living now. Uh, and, Sober. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, riding a bike down the road. <laughs> I feel all of these things. But at least he was like, whoa, everything's cool looking. Uh, thought he was going insane and that the LSD had poisoned him. To be fair. Damn. We all would have thought the same thing. <laughs> Naturally, he called a doctor. And th- when the doctor <sighs> got there, you know, gave him a little examination and said, there's, there's nothing really wrong with you, except for you have extremely dilated pupils. Now, if you know anything about history, know anything about... Anything we've talked about, doctors didn't really know anything until about 50 years ago. <laughs> and they're like, eh, you're either a witch or you're fine. <laughs> There's yeah. ghosts in his blood. <laughs> <laughs> After the doctor left, um, he started having a better time because it's like, well, I'm not dying. I'm partying now. Yeah. Like- so then he started to experience the kaleidoscopic, fantastic images again. Sort of like flaming skulls racing across the sky. Into a minotaur orgy in the clouds. Wow. He was uh, probably influenced by, like, you know, obviously Nazis were just right over there with their skulls all over their uniforms. True. And he was just, like, visualizing imagine? the conflict in the sky. Yeah. If we're up to Nazis, they probably would have made minotaur men, <laughs> like, coming to attack us. Uh, and then just Careful. lots of colors. That's what they don't tell you, folks. All the Nazis were on acid. Lots of colors bleeding all over the place. Uh, and it's at this point, he, you know. Well, I guess this is life now. <laughs> feel it, feel yeah. it. He, is, I guess he starts this is accepting yeah. that he will never stop yeah. feeling this way. Feelings of euphoria. Just... 
You know, he is a happy go lucky guy. Yeah, not so bad. <laughs> He's like walking down the street, just like kicking his heels. You know, <laughs> you know like dramatically walking down the street. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> Your eyes are messed up. That's Hello. the only thing wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, like Velociraptor meets him <laughs> at the door. Come this way for cheesecake. <laughs> I will follow you, Velociraptor. It's like some little like heathen boy <laughs> with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Can't have a cup of tea. So after, yeah, where is he? He's still in Sweden, right? Or Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. We just give everyone foreign British accents here. Yeah, that's what we do. Basil, Switzerland. They did own most See, of Basil, the world at one point. Basil, Basil, <laughs> Basil, Basil of Acid Street. It's E L. <laughs> it's E L. So I assume Basil. Let's just go with that. Yeah, well, after uh, his ordeal, which lasted probably about 10 hours, I think. This ordeal. Yeah. This fucking trip. Right. Um, he realized that he was onto something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. I'm I would good. imagine so. The first man to ever trip balls on LSD is like, you know what? Going to make so much fucking money. <laughs> uh, he thought of it as a powerful psychiatric tool to help uh, mentally... Challenge, not challenged, but <laughs> <laughs> insane. People Take with it psychoses. Here first, we'll test it out. <laughs> what are you trying to say? People with psychoses. It and must whatnot. be why Jason's so normal. <laughs> if, if Jason, had just, if if you were the one on the bike, and um, you would have just start going to homeless people, I'd be like here you go, <laughs> just like rubbing all them. Observe. Um, but because of its intense and introspective nature. Uh, he didn't think people would ever use it recreationally, um, just for medicinal purposes, really. Oh, he l knew nothing about humans. <laughs> uh, let's take a nitrous balloon. It's like, this is nitrous is not for this is for this. Don't care. Yeah. I don't know that the Swiss are known for having like, you know, the being on the pulse of you know, humanity. <laughs> the world as the, as the country burns around them. Yeah, He's they, like, do, do, do. They're like, we're neutral. We're going to house all like the world's sketchy money and like protect like criminal billionaire pedophiles. Like, all right, whatever. <sighs> Historical. <laughs> it was introduced as a commercial medication in 1947 under the trade name uh, Delicid. And uh, came to the attention of the United States. Delicid. <laughs> Side effects may include. <laughs> 1949. The United States government. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Once again. Uh, first off... It, it, Those trustworthy motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they were responsible <laughs> with it. Well, what... Who, Go on and tell us the story, Jason. Yeah, their, I'm people, sure their pupils also got wide. Uh, well, first off, the people who got it mainly were psychiatrists and people in <laughs> psychology departments and colleges. And the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> well, was, well, they didn't get it till I later. I know, that was yeah, later. Yeah, I'm just yeah, they didn't get it till later. Around. God. That's like the 70s, 60s, late 60s. Late 60s. Get it right. <laughs> late 60s is early 70s. You don't want the Beatles coming after you. <laughs> this state. One of the uh, <laughs> big doctors was a man named Sidney Cohen. Uh, Literally big. He's Sean Lennon. Sean Ono after you. <laughs> who was trying to use LSD as a means of replicating the effects of mental illness to better study it <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. You know, because that's what science is all about. So uh, he decided to take it himself, October 12th, 1955, and was expecting to have a terrible time. Um, of course, you know, you're just injecting foreign substances into your body. I'm sure you're just like, oh, this is going to end well. But he experienced no confusion or disoriented delirium. So he's like, oh, okay, that's not bad. I might prescribe that. Huh. Uh, and then uh, him and a friend of his, uh, Aldous Huxley, uh, author of Brave New World. And like Doors of Perception, which oh, went yeah. on later to inspire the name of the band, The Doors. Right. Well, they started doing LSD together. <laughs> um, Might as well. Indeed. <laughs> you didn't have to pay for it. They were just making it. Yeah. Like in a lab. I'm going to try this shit. And doctors <laughs> were just giving it to their friends. Hey, World War II just ended. We got nothing new. <laughs> We're just synthesizing a ton of this weird <laughs> chemical. It makes you feel pretty cool, man. It's like got like just like a big old cauldron. It's like, hey, man, just get a cup. <laughs> it's just got like those fucking vials with like the corks in the top. You know, they just like handing them out. Shake them up. <laughs> As it goes, the fucking dark. Face. They're brown. You know, you can't really see in them. 
give them a little syringe. Yeah, this looks healthy. Not a syringe, but you know, a little droplet dropper. That's right. what they call them, droppers. Yes. That is the name. And some of the doctors, as I said, you know, started giving it to their friends. And there was one man who was friends with uh, several doctors named Alfred Matthew Hubbard, a.k.a. Captain Trips. <gasps> oh, <laughs> with two Ps. <laughs> that guy was cool. Uh, walked around with a, a briefcase filled with uh, pure LSD, mescaline, and uh, psilocybin. Uh, just giving it out to people. It's estimated he gave all that st- shit out to about 6,000 people. He had a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, and he may have gotten... A lot of friends that he made when he just poured that... <laughs> he opened the briefcase and poured it in people's water as he's walking down the street. Well, he may have been involved in some uh, government uh, stuff coming up here in a little bit as so well. He, yeah, he had a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, had a tranquilizer full of LSD. <laughs> it's just, like, just making random people trip throughout the country. Yeah, dose some people. That's what they did. Yeah. But because the uh, medical experiments uh, were going well, uh, a man named... Humphrey Osmond uh, was treating uh, alcoholics with LSD and found a 50% drop in people who uh, started abusing alcohol again. So they're like, okay. So actually, the uh, Time magazine published six positive articles about LSD between uh, 1954 and 1959. Like, oh, that's... Trust the media. (laughs) (laughs) It's not too bad at all. The media never lies to you. Historical. And in 1957, uh, the vice president of J.P. Morgan, um, Gordon Wasson, uh, wrote an article in Time Magazine. Sorry, Life Magazine. about. Oh, oh, which is it? Life. It's life. When you take acid, is it time? Is it life? Shit, (laughs) man. I've never thought about it that way. God damn, man. It all makes sense. You're blowing my mind. Uh, It was... (laughs) It was life. Uh, he okay, wrote <laughs> he wrote an article about uh, magic mushrooms, and that article led Hoffman to uh, isolate psilocybin. Uh, of course, it did to sort of pair that with the LSD that the Sanders. It's like the Bloods and the Crips. <laughs> We're gonna do some hippie flipping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they started selling it with their LSD, and uh, <laughs> what's some extra spice? These guys were just like fucking. <laughs> Scientists. That's what Damn, they were. Pablo Escobar. Yeah, yeah, yeah remember, remember. Hoffman, just like this little Swiss guy. Yeah, he's all, all assuming. It's like, really, this dude's dealing, synthesizing fucking drugs. <laughs> yeah, man. Trust your doctors, the ones who are peddling all those goddamn <laughs> drugs all the time. And who knows what they're taking right now? Those are the doctors back then taking acid. The people that are, like, trying to, like, check your heartbeat, they're probably like, whoa, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> just, I'm going to usher in a cultural and creative revolution. <sighs> Casually. Um, yeah, all those pills, man. The Wasson article on mushrooms also inspired uh, a Harvard University professor named Timothy Leary. That means they're smart. To visit uh, Mexico to experience the mushrooms himself. <laughs> Flew him in a Chinook. <laughs> Timothy Leary. Uh, overall, while LSD was being administered to uh, psychiatric patients, around 40,000 people. Uh, received it, including Cary Grant, film star of uh, Bringing Up Baby fame. Um, Stanley Cooper probably took some too. <laughs> basically, any creative person that was anybody took that shit. Yeah. Because that's what people do. Uh, not us. It was also around. Well, we're not anybody. So yeah. Or creative. Worth note. That's what I meant. <laughs> we suck. The late 50s, early 60s, where. Like I said, Timothy Leary comes back from Mexico having just done a fuck ton of mushrooms, and now he has LSD in his possession. Uh-oh. So he, ha- he has <laughs> himself a good go. time. <laughs> I left searching gold, and I came back <laughs> with LSD. <laughs> uh, he started uh, experimenting it on himself and his medical students. Um, I want to play a game. <laughs> Here, take this. Because he thought with the right dosage and set, which was your personal mindset, and uh, setting. An easily quantifiable thing. <laughs> How is your mindset right now? <laughs> and take this. With guidance of professionals, that LSD could alter behavior in dramatic and beneficial ways. Uh, and it got so bad that other students were becoming jealous 
of the students he was testing on. So they started taking it recreationally, <laughs> which wasn't illegal at the time. But Timothy Leary is sort of the one who got it spreading. Uh, He's the one that made it cool. Where it was just more, <laughs> more or less contained in uh, medical hey circles right now hey. or before. Hey, kids. You want to be a doctor? What's cool? And so you had two types of LSD users. You had the Aldous Huxley type who thought it was just so mind-blowing that it should be kept secret and only for elite people, musicians, you know, talented people to further Creatives. creativity. Yeah. yeah. And then you had Timothy Leary uh, type people who were just like, <laughs> it's going to change the world, man. I haven't stopped tripping for five years. <laughs> start a revolution and beat the man and whatever. Shit like that. Yeah. But then you also it's have... It's going to change people's perceptions, and we can change how we think about things, and we're going to do... We're going to be a, bring in world peace. It's like, all right. Yeah, and like, when it gets to the, world, the like, year 2021, there will be world peace, and everything will be fine. Uh, but you also had another group of people looking at LSD, uh, and that was the U.S. government. Um, yeah. What aren't they looking at? Spe <laughs> specifically, the Central Intelligence Agency. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, they're like, like, you know, going through all the United Fruit files, being like, oh, shit. Uh, and then so the LSD file comes across their desk. Yeah, some guy's like taking it down. It's like, sir, and slams it down. Uh, they had reports that uh, American prisoners during the Korean War uh, were subjected or were brainwashed with some sort of drug or lie serum. So they were like, well, it must be this. The lie serum. Uh, so they started giving LSD to everyone. Uh, government officials. Uh, <laughs> Might as well. Uh, prostitutes, military personnel, members of the general public. No one knew they were getting this. So that they were undosing people against their will right. without their consent. The Trust government. Your government, yes. <laughs> the government. I love it. Here's a good flow chart, folks. And this will always, you can always follow this. And like Timothy Leary talked about, it's like, think for yourself, question authority. And it's just like, but what if there's a global pandemic? It's just like, think for yourself, question authority. But what if there's a terrorist attack? Think for yourself, question authority. Just go by that. Yes. It always seems to work. And most of their experiments ended with uh, psychological torture. So that's kind of fun. Well, might as well. Uh, no, that's how you got to end something. <laughs> well, they were they were dosing people without their consent, but they also had volunteers. Oh, yeah, like a homeless guy. They're like, we'll give you a sandwich, five bucks. In uh, oh whoa, <laughs> some of them college kids that graduated and then got jobs at the CIA. Yeah, yeah, you know, the clean like, cut oh, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, we're referencing Project MK Ultra <sighs> because we did, we didn't say it yet. MK Ultra, the so, mind control experiments. I mean, honestly, it's a pretty sweet name. <laughs> so, uh, in Stanford University in 1959, uh, a man named Ken Kesey uh, volunteered uh, to take part in the CIA financed MK Ultra program, where he was given LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, cocaine, and DMT. Now, because he was a they volunteer. Sounds like a good weekend. Yeah, I was like, they had all that? Right. Uh, and because he was what a What year was this? <laughs> 1959, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 1959. Elvis. <laughs> Eisenhower. I feel good. Hmm. Uh, I like Ike. <laughs> and LSD. <laughs> Same amount of letters. <laughs> and because he was a volunteer, he knew what he was being given and, you know, all that crap so he was taking extensive <laughs> you're notes. gonna see skulls and minotaurs bro <laughs> so he is taking extensive notes about his feelings and what he felt or of course uh what he saw <laughs> and redundant. All, all that shit <laughs> his feelings and what he felt <laughs> yeah i feel like i'm feeling <laughs> um <laughs> feel your feelings our new band <laughs> and three years later all of the experiments and the fact that he was sort of a human guinea pig uh led to him writing the book uh one flew over the cuckoo's nest in 1962. Great movie. Right. In which he... We don't read books here, though. He... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's always a better movie, right? Um, Milos Foreman, great that, director. Like, like, that, <laughs> li like they say, the movie's always better than the book. <laughs> That's, you see, 
you know, it, that's it, what I did with our time issue. We went back in time. That's the way it normally went because movies are awesome, and we've gotten so used to movies. Fuck books. <laughs> now, uh, so Ken Kesey, after the uh, popularity of his book, he got a lot of cash. So he bought himself a house in California and just had a bunch of parties with, with celebrities. And to supply his parties with LSD, he found a man named Augustus Owsley Stanley III, otherwise known as Bear. <laughs> and Bear loved to make acid. He was a chemist student that dropped out. Uh, of really. course. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making fucking thousands of dollars a day on acid. Why would I stay in school? Uh, but they weren't selling it. They were just giving it out. Oh, he was selling it. Augustus, we need to you cook. Know, maybe they weren't paying money, but they were paying something. Ass, gas, or ass. ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, gas back then, maybe. Yeah. Oh, hey, gas nowadays. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Fill your car up with gas. We might run out. Uh, he set up a lab in San Francisco uh, and hung out with Ken Kesey. Uh, the author at his parties KK. Uh, with the band Warlocks, the Warlocks, sorry, who would, uh, <laughs> I almost I got apologize. confused. <laughs> I apologize because they would later become the Grateful Dead. Uh, who are they? Exactly. Uh, I think they wrote hot blooded. <laughs> uh, <and laughs> actually, he was uh, a sound guy, a sound engineer for some of the bands too. Uh, including at least he thought he was Jefferson airplane. Uh, <laughs> You know. All making sense. <laughs> right. But uh, the government... <laughs> right. Is, is the acid kicking in, Jason? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, man. We should listen to Jefferson Airplane right now. Catch the episode. <laughs> I felt feelings. <laughs> uh, so the One. government the government's starting to see the proliferation recreationally that the plebs are starting to open their mind. <laughs> Who would have thunk? And so they fucking they crack down, crack down on it. Uh, the National Institute of Mental Health uh, decided that they were going to stop funding uh, medical experiments using LSD. Yep. Uh, and in 1960 they made it illegal. 1965, they made it illegal. <laughs> Still a few years. <laughs> Drug Enforcement Administration said that while early signs, you know, pointed in a good direction, it's just not good. It leads to people becoming crazy and it leads to people questioning our authority. Yeah. And thinking for themselves. Can you imagine, yeah, taking acid in the fifties going like, Good God, we live in suburbs and everything is terrible, <laughs> you know. Well they just like the whole yeah, we social, have nothing to listen well, to. Well it would just make you examine the whole social order and question everything, and that's what back then they just didn't want people doing that. And and they still got, don't want people doing that. And then <laughs> I mean you they got never this. want people doing that. Exactly. Uh so the first states to pass laws out making L S D illegal were uh Nevada and California. Uh <laughs> May 30th, 1966. And oh, then uh, pretty much around the world, everyone was like, yeah, we should probably do that too. The laboratory company that Hoffman worked at was distributing it around the world. They stopped production in 1965. <laughs> it's like at the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark when they're like, oh yeah, there's no more acid. And they find <laughs> the big vial <laughs> in the place. You just imagine this acid factory, just all the workers getting laid <laughs> off and then they just, you know, shut the, pull the switch <laughs> down, everything shuts down and Hoffman, you know, hangs up his coat and walks out. It's like the end of a Saw movie. As I said earlier, it's like, it's I don't like know soaring. if it's like the end of a Saw movie. I feel well, like this is them a little, in, they all I feel like this is like die. the end of Schindler's List. Well, that's not good either. <laughs> They're taking Hoffman. Oh, Nazis are taking Hoffman. These are not away. good either. One. In 1985, though, a Northern... <laughs> Illinois University professor named Thomas B. Roberts <laughs> decided to have himself a little party co commemorating um, Albert Hoffman's first trip on April 16th uh, when he accidentally dosed himself. The good times. <laughs> Except for that date fell in the middle of the week, so he's like, well, that's a pain. <laughs> Let's just do the day he intentionally took acid. So and now April, <laughs> Convenience. Ni <laughs> April 19th is now considered bicycle day. The day you're supposed to trip fucking balls. And ride your bike. Yes. <laughs> you ding. left that part out. Ding, ding. 
Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that is a brief synopsis of <gasps> lysergic acid diethylamide. Yeah. Don't do it, kids. It's bad for you. Don't no. question the government. It's and bad then for today you. they're kind of like opening it up. Oh, yeah. In 2014, studies started uh, reemerging about how it does sort of help mental psychoses. Yeah. And I think it's really more. Mental I think health. They, they look more at, at um, MDMA, I think, is more it's therapeutic. Yeah. It know. actually had a resurgence. It sort of died off, uh, but it had a resurgence in the late 80s when MDMA started coming out in the rave scene and LSD became part of the rave scene then. Oh, that would, yeah. that would have been fun in the 80s. <laughs> it's like, I'm tripping balls and I feel great. And it's the 80s. <laughs> yeah, that's why everyone remembers the 80s so fondly is because everyone's fucking tripping and rolling and doing coke and voting for It was for mainly Reagan. coke, though, to be fair, to our parents. <laughs> I'd love to be that guy in 1950 doing. Everyone's coke. just doing acid coke, Molly, selling fucking guns to Iran, yeah, and voting for <laughs> Ronald Reagan, selling <laughs> guns to Iran, funding Contras, getting caught, <laughs> funding Contras. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Whoops! How did that money get in that account? <laughs> get back on the speedboat, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 80s. <laughs> Consequences be damned. We'll worry about this yeah. 30 years Get on my wave rider. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of here. We're going to blow this joint. <laughs> oh, you caught us. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Speeds away to Kenny Loggins. <sighs> All right. I guess I guess we're, okay, uh, yeah. we're finished. Yes. Let me tell you, don't listen to Kenny Loggins on acid. <laughs> Unless you want to go to the danger zone. <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> Unless you want to kill yourself. <laughs> Nothing against Kenny Loggins. Dude, I don't know, man. Kenny Loggins on acid might be pretty (laughs) decent. I can tell you. I might have to try it. I would never know. You know what? If you give us uh, money, we will all do acid. Listen to Kenny Loggins. (laughs) And record (laughs) it. On repeat. So there's evidence. Yeah. You you know you get your money's worth. You're not just going to give us money for nothing. We'll stream it. We'll live stream it. Yeah, we're not like those escort services. (laughs) We'll live stream acid trip. You know. So give us five stars on iTunes if we're worth it. Five tabs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> per person. Might as well. I don't know if that's going to be enough. A heroic. Device. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I, I don't know how ASA works, but I feel like we need like 20 per person. Yeah, give us extra just in case. Um, yeah. And even if we're not worth it, like, just pretend that we are. And send the strips anyway. And send us ecstasy. If you don't have acid, might as well just send whatever you got. Yeah, right? We're historical. We we like to study and research. We're scientists and historians. Yes, and psychologists, and all therapists. of the above. Yeah, honestly, we we are we have doctorates and everything. We give it to ourselves. <laughs> uh, if you like listening, but you also like watching, well, we have we're on YouTube, so you can watch it there. Um, and you can find us on social media: Instagram, Twitter. That's it. We're not on Facebook. I'm just kidding. We are on Facebook, but fuck them. Fuck yeah, all of them, really. Yeah. I mean, I, social media sucks. Whatever. Um, we have to use it. You have to use it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, the only real incentive I have to use it is to promote the creative things that we do. So Talking about acid. <laughs> yeah. 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 You got to talk about acid like this, man. Acid hole. Take Actually, it. that sounds bad. Take it. <laughs> Take it a new turn, man. <laughs> Jesus, man acid hole it's kind of funny actually <laughs> it is funny uh word of mouth is the best advertising we can get so if you like this <laughs> then you know tell people and be like hey there's this thing that's good and then and you should also enjoy it when the podcasts that like you really like when they run out of episodes for the week listen to us like make us like your third yeah we'll take third yeah well, hell we'll take fifth shit we'll take oh put us in th- Put us on in the background while you're cleaning your house on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Michael, take your virginity. Um, (laughs) You can email us at at historical at gmail.com. Look at me. (laughs) Uh, You can email us at historical at gmail.com with any questions or business proposals. Um, Keep it (laughs) professional. Uh, I've been getting like a bunch of emails from shills. Yeah, send me a resume. That are just like, hey, come join our thing. And I'm just like, man, I'm already on a ton of things. Like, how many things are there? 
You know, there's always going to be another there thing. There's always a new thing. So many things. And everybody wants me on their thing. But guess what? Like, if it's a new thing and it's going to blow up, tell us. <laughs> tell us the <that>, name. <laughs> we'll happily invest. Oh, yes. And speaking of investing, tell us whichever crypto coin is going to be the one that blows up next. <laughs> so email us. Uh, the, the word on the street is safe moon. Oh, no. We're not going to actually say anything. We're going to take it like Elon. <laughs> we have that power in historical. <laughs> All right, so the statement of the week this week is the government invented aliens to distract away from World War III. Life is full of holes. Enter wisely. Peace be with you. Look out for the aliens. (laughs) 